the uh, the lady that bought the door from us, she's supposed to get back to us this week with a stain color for the door. I guess she doesn't want like the green and orangey yellow uh, pretty color of plywood. So if she wants a stain, she still hasn't gotten that back to us. We're supposed to deliver it on Friday. It's currently Monday. And yeah, we're supposed to deliver it on Friday, which I'll be out of town. I got to work on Friday. So Jenny will have to deliver it or We'll have to get it to her a day early or a day late. But if she doesn't get us that stain color back, there's no way that we can get it to her on time. So I've got my fingers crossed that, uh, you know, she's kind of slow getting me the stain color. And then we can, uh, you know, maybe go a few days past the due date. Anyway, we'll still get it done. We'll still be ready. Even if she texts me right now and has the stain color, we'll still get it done. But it would be nice to have a little bit of breathing room. So I just unclamped and scraped the uh, the first set of these. These are gonna go in the door. They're gonna go like this, make a herringbone pattern. Um, I'm gonna trim up these ends on the miter saw, and then we'll cut it flush against the door with uh, with the track saw. But my buddy that I met, Drew from uh, Workbench Con, he gave us a great idea. I've seen this before, but I didn't know that a paint scraper actually had like a sharp blade on it. I just thought it was like a piece of metal. I guess a blade is a piece of metal, but you get what I mean. But this paint scraper is amazing for getting rid of glue even after it dried. I used to use a block plane or I tried to like wipe it up with a wet rag. Both were just a nightmare, but this paint scraper is the best thing. Literally, it only takes like two or three strokes down the, uh, down the board and then all your glue is gone. Like I don't need to run this through the planer. I think I still will just to get the residual glue out. I think I'm still gonna run these through the planer when we're all said and done. But yeah, uh, these are super nice. So we're looking forward to making that work. I hate assembly line work. I don't know what it is about it. It's just doing the same repetitive thing over and over and over. It's not therapeutic for me. And I think that's because the job that I have, I have a lot of downtime. I'm really just kind of there on call, so to speak. And uh, when I get off from work, <laughs> the last thing I want to do is just to do the same thing over and over and over again. Anyway, that paint scraper was a great tip. Anyway, you can tell I'm out of breath. I'm in shape, you know? Uh, <laughs> I'm really nervous about this uh, project because I didn't give myself enough time. I wanted this project, I wanted the money, I wanted to get it done, over with, and behind me. Jenny and I, we took the last week of our vacation to sort of simulate what it was gonna be like when we moved down south and uh, had more free time to do this woodworking business full time. Yeah, I, this is a great pace if I didn't have another job I was working 80 hours a week at. So yeah, that's on me. I didn't give myself enough time to do this. We'll still get it done, but I'm working way harder and way faster than I really want to just because of my other job. So holy maybe a little over 150 more days until I can quit my job and we'll be gone for good. Can't wait.
Focus! Focus! I'm really surprised with how well this plywood planed. Sorry, it's loud, I got the heater on. I was really worried, I thought I was gonna just chew up the first couple of boards. Uh, but this end grain of plywood is, is planing really well, so I'll still have to sand it and everything, but I'm really shocked. You can plane edge grain of plywood. I'm having flashbacks to the plywood challenge we did for the Modern Maker podcast. This is just like what we did there, but kind of like on steroids, because it's three sheets of plywood instead of uh, just one. So anyway, I'll keep cracking at it. Guys, I had no idea that this plywood planer shavings would just be absolute like microscopic dust. I'm gonna throw my respirator on. Um, I know that I've got dust collection, but I do not want to be breathing any of this in. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the respirator on. So let me back up a little. This is the story of about how my life got flipped turned upside down. How we got this project. So our little neighborhood puts out a magazine and we got featured in it one day just because I happened to have the garage door up when I was woodworking and the lady that writes the magazine just stopped by and she started asking me questions and we got featured, it was super cool. And in the magazine, I made sure to give a plug to our business and sure enough, uh, that real estate agent, she found us and she said, hey, we're rebuilding a new house in that neighborhood. Would you be interested in building us a big live edge sliding barn door. And I told her, absolutely. We went back and forth a little bit. She wanted a really nice live edge style sliding barn door. Very similar to the one Johnny Brook made on his channel. So you should go check that video out. I'll put a link down here or up in the card somewhere. So we hadn't quite closed the deal before we went to WorkbenchCon. And then as soon as we came back, we closed the deal and said, okay, let's go. Now her budget, she didn't want to spend more than $2,000 on it, which I totally get like you're on a budget when you're flipping a, a house like this. And because I was calling the sawmill, I was getting prices. I was looking at, okay, what if I slabbed it up myself? What if I got the sawmill to slab it up and level it? Cause you know, they've got a big CNC that they can just level these things uh, way easier than I can. Long story short, I wasn't going to be able to do this live edged sliding barn door for any less than two or three thousand dollars and she just didn't want to go that high. So we pitched a couple other options and we said, look, if you're willing to do thirteen hundred, we could do one out of plywood and we can make a really cool modern pattern. Fell in love with that. She saw our Rockler plywood challenge coffee table build, which you should take a look. I don't know, one of these. Yeah, she saw that, fell in love with the pattern and said, can you do this for the door? And we said, sure. She said, okay, how much it's going to cost? I said, it's about thirteen hundred. So I was doing some quick math in the back and forth on Facebook Messenger. I don't really like to close deals on Messenger. I like to do it over the phone or face to face, but this, this is just kind of how it works. So we're messaging back and forth with a couple different options. And But anyway, so we finally, we closed down the deal for $1,300. We included a couple of other bids for some other parts of the house, but this is what we came down to with the door and we didn't even end up installing it. Her contractor had installed several of these before. So that was an extra like three or $400 that we were going to charge her for installation that we didn't have to mess with or touch or be liable for, which is super nice. That's all in her contractor. So again, it's all the amount of work that you want to do. You want to install it. You want to make that extra three or 400 bucks. Okay, cool. Go for it. But if not, for us, it just wasn't wasn't for us. I'd never installed that kind of hardware before and we could have done it. I'm sure we would have followed the directions, no problem. But on a high stakes build like this with a high profile client and it being our first job, we're just gonna let her contractor handle it because they've already got the relationship there. He said he's already installed several of these. So that's not money that I was really too eager about having. So I'm just happy we got the door and we got the hardware and we got the handles installed and we delivered it. You'll see at the end, but the final product turned out amazing. We're really impressed, so.
as a woodworking business, it's so, you, you're excited about woodworking and you wanna to explain to the customer all the cool things that you're gonna do and how it's different and how you're better and all the different joinery methods and like, oh, well, I'm actually gonna buy hardware from this company and blah, blah, and I met them and like, nobody cares. No, the customer doesn't care. If you can turn that into like a, a sales story where they get emotionally invested in it, great. But the customer does not care how it works. Unless they go out of their way to ask you, the customer just doesn't care how it works or they don't really care where it came from. Now, if there's an emotional appeal to be made, definitely go for that, you know? I sold her on a fireplace mantle in this same home because I was able to tell her that the, the wood came from a bigger city closer to us that was reclaimed lumber. They, it was in an old neighborhood and the trees fell down and instead of just burning the trees or taking them to the dump, they started slabbing them up and selling the reclaimed wood. And so with that story, that emotional story behind it, sold her on the fireplace mantle. I didn't have to do very much at all. I just said, oh, it would be really easy to take a live edge slab and make a fireplace mantle out of it. Don't explain things to your customers unless they legitimately want to know how it works. Try to get them wrapped up emotionally and then they'll buy from you for years to come, as long as you make good products. Uh, this has been a long project. I quit filming. I didn't really want to be slowed down because I had to spray finish and sand. I didn't really know exactly my process for that, but we got it all figured out. We just sanded it with the belt sander and then with the oscillating uh, sander, we got it smooth and then started spraying finish. I only had a little bit of armor seal or um, what is it? It's not armor seal. Uh, Enduravar. I sprayed some Enduravar with my nice Fuji sprayer and uh, I didn't have enough to do all four or five coats. And so I had to go to the hardware store and get some water-based polyurethane that's clear. Uh, it doesn't have any tint in it. So we still got the coloring for the first couple coats of Enduravar, and then we finished it with regular water-based uh, polyurethane. So the finish turned out great. It's a little glossier than I kind of wanted. Um, you know, big box stores, just because it says satin doesn't always mean it's satin, but that's all I have time to do. And uh, I still think it looks nice. I don't think it looks bad. It's just not as matte flat as I wanted it. I guess I will see you in two days, but to you, it'll just be like five seconds. So. We just got, uh, your hair's fine. No, it's sticking out. Hang on. Look. We just got a text from the realtor. Um, yeah, she left the house unlocked for us and they're gonna run and go get dinner. So we're gonna swing by and get some pictures and video of the barn door. So should be pretty exciting. It's gonna look so good. I know, I can't wait. Anyway. I want wanna, one. You wanna get the tripod? And mm -hmm. I'll get the camera stuff. Okay, bye. Ready, break. She forgot the tripod. I think this project turned out yeah, awesome. It looks amazing. We're blown away. Like this you saw, house. like you saw in the montage, this house isn't finished. It's a local realtor in town. Mm -hmm. Her and her husband are refurbishing this uh, this part of the home, and yeah, it's they're doing such a good job. It's incredible. You saw in the montage, everything just looks really yeah. clean, and there's a gorgeous view out the back door of the property. But anyway, I think this complements it really well. It's yeah. sleek and modern, which goes with the rest of the theme which of the is, house. Yeah, kind of the, the the look they're going for with. Slick yeah. metal and so you saw in one of the clips we have a fireplace mantle that was an mm -hmm. upsell once we were in the house like measuring for this door we sold them on the mantle we almost yeah. got a, a vanity as well so overall yeah. just a really cool customer um, she has a lot of connections in the area 
Um, she's a you know, businesswoman too, so she knows how everything works, she gets it. And those are kind of the best clients to, to find, somebody who gets it and who has connections. She has at least 15 other people she could throw our names out to. So we're a little sad that you know we're moving soon and so we're not gonna have her as a local client anymore. But we know the type but of person to look for also. Exactly. And like especially with real estate agents, they understand how business works and they're yeah. not so tight-fisted with all their money. They're mm -hmm. a little more willing to spread it around because they understand like, hey, like. You spend if, money, get cool stuff. Right, because this, people buy your honestly, things. like this piece is gonna sell a home. Yeah. It really will. People are going to walk it's in and they're going to be piece. floored by the awesome kitchen upstairs and they're going to come downstairs and this is going to okay. seal the deal. Yeah. So, and she understood that, that this, yep. this piece was probably going to sell a home. So anyway, she's super happy. We're super happy. Um, all in all, it's just, it was a great project. Yeah, so we're going to look for more of this kind of stuff when we move down south in the fall. All right, so before I hit my tea time for this afternoon, let's go over the numbers. So we did this project. <sighs> Geez, like late February, so we were still working, dealing with schedules and all that kind of thing. But all in all, with design time, with labor, with putting everything together, it took us about 21 hours in order to build this project. We keep track of that in our calendar. We use Google Calendar for everything. Every meal, every appointment, every job that we do every time we go to work for our day jobs, like everything we do, we put all of that in our Google Calendar so that when we needed to go do these calculations, we can go back in time and see how long everything took us. And we'll adjust it also. So if we miss an appointment or something takes us longer, we'll go back and adjust it. It takes 30 seconds at the end of every task and we don't ever have to go back and crunch numbers or think about it or look up timestamps on the camera files, like stuff like that. So 21 hours to build this thing total. At $30 an hour, that comes out to $630 worth of labor. Labor. So I thought that was a little high. It took us way longer than I thought to build this thing. Now, we also built the mantle at the same time. So that was in conjunction with this, which I'll address that in the mantle video in a couple weeks. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that one as well. So going on to materials, we had three sheets of three quarter inch birch plywood. Three sheets of that came out to about $170. Finish and hardware, I just have $30 there. We had two door handles, I don't know, a couple bucks each, and then our regular finish and glue and everything else. We took, I don't know, maybe a quarter of a gallon of wood glue to do all this and then pin nails and stuff like that. So all in all, we say $30. Hardware came out to $110. We just bought the kit off of Amazon for about a hundred bucks. So $110 there to get it taxed and shipped. And then again, like we didn't install that, we just delivered it and her contractor put it up. So you total those two together and then multiply by 1.4 to get our 40% markup and you come out to $1,288 and I charged $1,300 and that's what we got paid for. So all in all, I think that we really did a good job of pricing this project. I honestly thought we would make a little bit more of a profit on this job. Uh, the labor kind of ran away from us, but you know, that's on me. But again, you need to have a pricing structure where well, the price that you agree with the client on, there's a little bit of wiggle room there. And there was plenty of wiggle room here, $1,300 on the nose. I really wish we could have done the live edge slab door. I don't think we could have gotten the live edge slab. And plus, I wouldn't have made as much money, even though this project is worth less because we did most of the labor and the material were cheaper we actually made more money on this project than we would have if we had sold a live edge sliding barn door so just kind of convenient the way that that worked out anyway I hope this is encouraging for you to not look at the work that we do and say oh well I could do it better that's great if you could do it better go sell it if the people are willing to pay me thirteen hundred dollars for this door imagine what you could do as a master craftsman or a woodworker that's been doing this for 30 years you know, we get a lot of comments about people that, I don't know if it's jealousy or what, but I don't have time to sit there and change everybody's mind in the comments. I'm closing deals, I'm making sales. I gotta stay busy with my business because we st we started having to turn jobs away. We started turning jobs away a month ago and we still kept getting people coming out of the woodwork and <laughs> no pun intended, wanting us to do things. So um, get out there, try it. You'd be surprised at how much money people would be willing to pay for even something that's like DIY level furniture. So go get it while it's good. Furniture is a huge industry and people are so used to particle board and MDF They have no idea the amount of value they're getting with you Even if you keep your prices competitive with Ashley furniture or something like that It's even though we don't recommend to do that you should charge way more But if that's what gets you going man, just go try it You'd be surprised at what people will be willing to pay if you make money and your customers happy nobody loses uh, If you want to launch your business and start closing deals down like this and making money in your spare time 
check out our programs. That's how you're gonna get the information in a really dense, easy to consume sort of way. You don't have to watch all of our YouTube channel to get all the information. You yeah, can we just... get to the point and get to the point quickly. So. Yep, and then we give you plenty of examples and follow up and details and everything else too. So check out the programs. If not, just subscribe and keep watching and yeah. you'll learn with us. Share us. Share your wins down in the comments whenever you sell stuff. We love reading those. Yeah, we, we those read are every the comment. best comments. We read, read every comment. Okay, bye. Bye.